Hello, I'm John Kneebone and welcome to Mainline Baits Carp Fishing TV, where today you join me on the banks of a lake that's looking, well, pretty wintry if I'm honest. There's barely a leaf hanging on the trees. All we've got is a nice pine forest over on the far bank just to give us a bit of greenery. But it's a time of year where you may have to tweak your tactics a little bit. You may even have to change them quite dramatically. As the metabolism of the carp slows, they become less active they may not even feed at all. And because of that, it's a time when minimal bait tactics can really come into their own. And one particular tactic that I'm gonna to talk to you about today, and that's fishing singles. So what I'm gonna do is give you my five top tips for fishing single hook baits. Okay, as you can imagine, when it comes to single hook bait fishing, there's not a whole lot to it. The tactics are pretty simple and so are the tips, but that's not to say that you can't do them really well and the best you possibly can. And the first thing I'm gonna talk about is something that's vitally important when you carp fishing at any time of the year, and that's location. Once you've got yourself in a swim where you feel you might be on fish or you've seen fish, it's vitally important that you keep watching that water and looking for signs of fish. So this morning, turned up to the lake. Instead of getting the rods out, the first thing I did was just watch the water for half an hour. There wasn't a lot of breeze on the, on the lake. The sun was just coming up. It looked absolutely prime for a fish to show itself. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. About halfway across the lake, a fish come up three times on the same spot. And at least that gave me a starting point for one of my rods. Throughout the rest of the day then, it's absolutely important to keep watching that water. You're just looking for any signs of activity that might give you a clue as to where those fish are. And even when fish aren't feeding and showing, they will still show throughout the winter. If they're laid up in an area of silt, they'll come up from time to time to clean their gills out and go back down. And it's just a little sign like that that could unlock the code to where those fish are gonna be throughout the winter. So tip one, watch the water. Okay then, tip number two is don't be afraid to move your rods around throughout your session. It's definitely worth roving at least one rod around your swim, if not a couple of them. If those fish are shoaled up, laying dormant on the bottom, it might take a few casts to just locate where those pods of fish might be. And if the fish ain't moving, well, it pays to move your hook bait around. That might be every half an hour, every couple of hours. You've just got to gauge that based on what you're seeing out in the lake. And if you do happen to see a fish, well then you 100% reel in a rod and get that over that fish, which is exactly what's happened here. I've seen a fish show a couple of times in the same area, down to my left. We've brought a rod in and we're gonna get that rig a bit closer to where I've seen that fish. And a little extra tip for you is if you do see a fish show, and you wanna try and keep the, the disruption down of casting onto its head, is if you can, just cast 20 yards past where you see that fish show, reel your rig in along the surface, when it's on that zone, just let it drop, feel it onto the bottom, just makes less disturbance instead of crashing that lead in right on top of the fish. Right, got this rod in, let's get it redone and back out in the lake. Okay, now we've got one of the rods reeled in, it's probably a good time to take you through tip number three, and it's a fairly obvious one, and that's using a bright hook bait. We've already said how these fish can be pretty dormant, inactive, laying on the bottom, and just having that little bit of visual stimulus could be just the thing you need to just provoke a little bit of investigation, a little bit of movement, maybe pick up those bonus fish. I'm a massive believer 
that you can cast a hook bait really close to winter carp but if there's something not there just to tip things into your favor and get that fish moving to go and see what it is well you could just as well be a hundred miles away as be right next to it and having that little bit of brightness in the color of the hook bait i think really really helps there's loads of colors to choose from i've got some winter classics here pineapple yellow pineapple catches hundreds of carp all the year long another old school flavor here tutti fruity nice bright orange flavor and that's the bait that i put on now because again don't be afraid to change the color of your hook bait throughout your session we reeled in a yellow pineapple i'm going to put an orange tutti fruity back out and just see if that makes any difference we've also got some colors that are still got that nice little bit of brightness but if you want something not quite so in your face we've got some sort of more pastel high visual colors there toasted almond flavor and this year i've been like a really big fan of the new high impact flavor the choco flavor really nice attractor in this one and again it's still got that brightness from the pale color but it's just not quite as bright as say the tutti fruity and the high visuals like i say i have a few different colors of you a few different options chop and change them throughout your session and if you find that one color is doing you all your bites then change all your rods over to that color and capitalize on that bit of knowledge right let's get this rod back out Okay, so the sun's decided to come out now and all of a sudden it feels like a summer's day as we move on to tip number four, which is using a liquid additive to boost the attraction of your hook bait. Because after all, we're relying on that single hook bait to do all the work for us. We've got the visual element, but what we want now is we want to supercharge the attraction of that hook bait so that there's attraction and a food signal dispersing out into the water column to hopefully bring those fish in. And there's a few different ways that we can do this. Firstly, we could use one of the smart liquids. We can add this onto the hook bait just before casting out. We can even add this onto the lead, the lead clip, other items of the terminal tackle to put that attraction out there on the lake bed and going up into the water column. We've also got bait sprays. Now these are a really good option because as I've already said to you, you want to be moving your rods around periodically through your session, or if you see a fish, reeling in and getting a hook bait over to that area. Now, if you've only just had that rod in the water half an hour or so and reel it in, instead of putting a fresh hook bait on, you could use a bait spray. It will super boost that hook bait and it's ready to go back out. Another favorite of mine, is the hook bait enhancement system dips. Brilliant dips, nice and thick, so you can dip your hook bait into the jar just before you cast out. You could have a few rigs made up, hook baits attached, just resting in there for your session. So you've got a quick change system and you've got some attraction already soaking into that hook bait. And as we showed you in the hook bait hacks video, that you can use these dips to pre-soak and glug your hook baits over a long period of time. But the best thing of all is they're just gonna give you loads and loads of attraction. And like I say, that's exactly what we're trying to achieve with that one single hook bait. And then finally, of course, we can use flavors that might already be in those hook baits. Just a cap full of flavor. I've got the Bonoffi here from the Profile Plus. Cap full of that in with your pop-ups, give it a shake, and you've got some nice super boosted hook baits. If you want to make a bit more of a custom dip, the multi-stim is a brilliant base liquid for that. Not only does it induce a feeding response from the fish, it extends from the fish farming industry for that reason. But like I say, you can add other flavors to this. And what I would say and recommend is that you use five parts multi-stim, so say five capfuls of that into an empty pop-up tub and then take one of your flavors. I've got milky toffee here pear and banana and add one cap full of that. Give it a swill around and you've got yourself a nice hook bait dip. But like I say, what's really important is that you give that single hook bait every chance of pulling those fish in and liquids will certainly do that. Okay, 
tip number five, and that for me is to use a pop-up rig. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, your hook bait is gonna sit up off the bottom a little bit. It's gonna be that little bit more in the face of any fish that are mooching around your area. It's got a good chance of being picked up. But the main reason is, is that we're gonna be casting these hook baits around our swim, different areas of the lake, potentially areas of the lake that we're not familiar with and we may not have mapped out on previous sessions. So casting into the unknown, if you've got a pop-up rig that will just sink slowly onto the bottom, you've at least got some assurance that if you feel the lead down, that you're gonna be well presented. And don't forget, at this time of year, there's gonna be dying weed, dead leaves, all sorts of things that can be on the bottom of the lake, which otherwise could be maybe quite a clean bottom. So the lake I'm fishing, I already know that it's mainly a silty bottom. There's not really any weed present. So I'm using the spinner rig and the hinge rig. But if I was fishing a venue where I found it to be quite weedy through the summer and potentially there's dead weed in the winter, I might turn to the chod rig. And if you'd like to know how to tie all three of these rigs, I'll leave links to those videos in the description below. But there you go, tip five, use a pop-up rig. Hopefully these tips will help you catch a few more fish this winter, along with our other videos packed full of tips, tricks, and rigs to help you catch more carp. And if you have been catching a few on mainline baits, make sure you upload your catch reports to our website. I'll leave a link in the description below where not only will your catch reports feature on our website, but all the details will be sent to our social media admin team. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up hit that notification button so you know when our next video is coming out. If you don't yet subscribe to the channel, please hit that subscription button below. It's really important. And for more how-to videos, I'll leave links to those here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.